I was talking to one of my favorite spiritual friends from Florida. She knows who she is, and she mentioned again the other day, I've heard it before, I've heard it from you uh, as well before. Why? Why don't the spiritual prophets and the teachers make it simpler? What's with all the big words and, you know, why is it so complex, right? And I like to say they did make it simple, but it's not that simple to figure out, okay? Let me make it as simple as possible for you using Jesus himself, who couldn't make it any more simple. First in Psalms uh, 82.6, it says, ye are gods. That's pretty simple, right? And then Jesus, right before he's crucified in John 10.34, is being harassed basically by his colleagues. And he says, isn't it written in your book that ye are gods? It, could you get any more simple than that? You are a god, small g, and that just means you're a part of God, okay? So now that I've told you that, are you fixed? Are you healed? Are you there? Okay, they could tell you directly that you're a god, and that doesn't cut it. Now that's a good goal to shoot for once you know that you're a god, whatever that, whatever he means by that. Now we have to figure out what that exactly means and how could we possibly be, you know, somehow on the uh, same level as the god that we've often been taught about. Or like Buddha says, you're Buddha too. How could I be on Buddha's level, you know? Well, it's not as simple because we have this thing called the ego in the way. And it's, it's, it twists and turns us and it makes us look, at, look in the wrong direction, right? It's our great enemy. And we have to outthink it, outpace it by doing a lot of different types of work, including the teachings and the deeper, more complex teachings, of which I probably wrote too many on the board today, but I'm going to try to keep it all together with a bunch of different arrows trying to keep my, my mind straight here, okay? But why is that? One, the mere act of seeking, seeking you'll find, will bring you to your inner godness, if you will. And so the complexity of it makes it like it's a, it's a pretty good hide and seek, right? It's not fun if like I closed my eyes and you guys went and hid and I opened them up and here you are. I mean, that's an easy gig. It's complicated to find the God with that. Okay. But it also requires a lot of restructuring the brain and changing the brain in many different ways to think about things different because we got taught wrong and we got taught a lot about how the world's unfair and we should complain about things and we should change things instead of trusting the way the world is uh, being presented to us. I'm going to walk you through exactly what that is. But first, I've written that line up there. I said it's our line for the year, at least for the time being. Recognition and liberation are simultaneous. The mere recognition in this context that you're a god will release you from all the burdens of the ego. It's pretty hard to get to that level, but it's there it is. Recognition and liberation are simultaneous. This is the same mission for all of us. Okay, Eight billion people on earth, all of us are playing the same game from a whole bunch of crazy different angles. But we all have this exact same goal, is to liberate ourselves through recognition by realizing that you're only you because you were born, the little piece of God in you was born in your context and mine was born in mine. And Joe's over there was his and, and Shaquille over there was born in his and Sally over there was in hers and on and on and on. Okay, I'm not gonna do eight billion names, but you get the idea. All of us were born in different contexts. And then we have to somehow find our way back to each other by recognizing that we're all a collective God, okay? So it is the same mission of, uh, uh, for all. In Jainism, I can't say this word. I'm gonna try parasparagrapho jivanam. Anybody know what that is? Mm. It means that we are all in service to each other. We are teammates in spirit. That's a concept from Jainism, okay? That's a great concept because we're all different pieces of God. And we're supposed to be like Humpty Dumpty unifying ourselves, pulling ourselves together. Okay? Well, we've got a couple tools to do that, to use that. We have our head and our heart. For the most part, that's what we need. We need this and we need this. And I'm going to walk you through how we do that. But I want to start with this wonderful um, little discussion that Albert Einstein and his friend Niels Bohr had about 100 years ago, in which they were talking about the ramifications of quantum physics, including the concept of superposition and how these concepts that they were learning through studying the physics were like really mind-blowing to them and how superposition in itself looks like the world is just a probability game and there's just um, there's random chance sometimes just random stuff happens and that's been long since proven that there is physical randomness coded into this world that we're in Einstein hated that to no end and he was at a conference when he as the story goes, hit his hand on the table and he said, God does not play dice with this universe. 
He hated the idea that they couldn't quite figure out exactly what's going on. He figured that there should be cause and effect for everything in the physical world. hundred years later, by the way, that's not changed. Thanks to superposition, very well studied, we've learned that sure enough, there's a random aspect to this world. You could be the greatest person in the world, but you're on the building on 9-11 and the plane hits it. I mean, it happens. You can live the perfect life and then bad stuff still happens to you. Random, okay? Einstein's colleague, Niels Bohr, said to him, Albert, don't tell God what to do. What a great uh, little quip that is, okay? Because it is the way it is, Niels Bohr was saying to Albert Einstein. God does seem to play dice with the universe. But let me clarify why Albert was actually right, okay? Physically, superposition is a dice game. It's true. You could be, uh, you know, shooting a free throw and you're, you're such a good free throw shooter. You, you hit it, you, you stroke it exactly like you want to and it ha hits off the back of the room and it bounces out. Or you're driving perfectly well through an intersection and someone shoots in and T-bones you, right? It, you don't control everything. And the physical world is going to demonstrate that to you, okay? There's some random uh, elements in there. And so superposition is indeed a dice game. But Albert was right if he just had looked at it spiritually. Because in the spiritual world, it is not a dice game. It's back to the idea of recognition and liberation. The fact is, there's no dice involved with the idea of you recognizing that you're a god. No dice. It's actually a very simple, straight-line concept. You have to realize it. It's like the only thing you have to do. And all of us are capable of coming to that realization, okay? And yet, it's a, it's a guarantee. And yet, there's a process that we have to go through. So I'll make it super simple again, simple drawings. You're a spiritual being having a temporary physical experience. Simple enough? And we know this is temporary. The challenge is recognizing that you're an eternal godlike being. That Jesus himself said, by the way, you're an eternal godlike being. And your job is to remember that or recognize that. And when you recognize that, you're like, wow, you mean all this individual me stuff? Remember, ego means I in Greek. All this individualization stuff that I obsess over and all this diversity that I fail to embrace, including my enemies who I'm allowed to hate, especially in American politics, all that stuff. You ain't going to realize you're God by hating on anyone. All the prophets teach perfection. You must love your enemy, including those who vote against you. Okay, good luck realizing you're a God not doing that. Okay. So you have to remember that you're a spiritual being, which means go back to this soul blob thingy, all right? And cultivate it somehow. Very specific teachings, John 14, 6, no one comes to the Father except through me, all right? Now this is the same being that said that the flesh counts for nothing. It's the spirit that gives life. Well, what is he talking about in John 14, 6? Yeah, no one does get to the Father except through the Christ. That's exactly true. He was speaking as Christ, not as Yeshua bar Joseph, physical man. He was speaking as the Christ. And what is the Christ? The word means to be anointed. And he said, if your eye is single, your whole body will be filled with light. The only way to get to the Father is through being the Christ too. And that means your whole body needs to be filled with light. Not resentment and shame and guilt and, you know, all those negative emotions. But if your whole body is filled with the light, that's how you come to the Father. And that's what he's saying in that quote. Remember, not flesh, he says. Flesh counts for nothing. You get to the Father through the Christ, which is what he was teaching us in John 14, 6. Samadhi in Buddhism, which is intense concentration, specifically is the word means union with the divine. Isn't that the same as getting to the Father? Union with the divine. And Samadhi is the eighth and final step of the Eightfold Path. And it's a clear-minded state. Of course, it's a peaceful state. You've dropped all issues. You're no longer resenting and fearful and shameful and, you know, on and on and on with that stuff. And you have a nice, focused, intensely concentrated state in which you feel the union with the divine. Well, this links to uh, Kabbalah, which uh, teaches, has a concept called the equivalence of form. And it's a wonderful way to think of it. The one teaching says that we discover the creator according to this principle, the equivalence of form. Well, what's the equivalence of form? As one of my favorite Kabbalah teachers describes, you know, you can, you can have a chicken and you can have a hammer and those two things can be close together, but they're not the same. They could be close, not the same. What, it, what can be, nothing physical can be equivalent. What can be equivalent? Well, energy and spirit. If I play F sharp, is that a, is that a note? or B flat, 
uh, and we're both playing the guitar or the piano or whatever, if we played at the same frequency, we're hitting the same note, aren't we? Well, we're energy and vibration. We're spiritual beings, remember? No, you're not your gods. Well, it says in says in uh, First John that God is love. Well, if you're being patient and I'm being patient, we're hitting the same note, right? That would be equivalent. If you're being forgiving, I'm being forgiving, that's hitting the same note, isn't it? If you're wise and I'm wise, and if you're, um, you know, honestly, if you have a sense of humor, I think God has a much better sense of humor than we give God credit for. You're in a pleasant mood, I'm in a pleasant mood, that can be an equivalent form, isn't it? It's not going to happen in the flesh. We come to know the creator, just like samadhi, the union with the divine. Kabbalah says you come to know the creator according to the, the uh, equivalence of form. It's like if you had, uh, you had a class in which you had to draw the Mona Lisa, but you have to draw it like Da Vinci. He did do the Mona Lisa, right? If you have, if you have to draw it exactly like Da Vinci, that's going to be a little bit of work, but you have the capability to do it. it might take some time. We are equivalent with God. Um, I have this little drawing here that reminds me of the Wii game that uh, my kids like to play in which you can, it's the little guy falling down in a bubble and your character is not aligned with them and you have to click your button so that your arms and legs move to match the character, okay? And you don't win until your character becomes equivalent with the match that's in the game. Fun game for 8 year olds <coughs> or 48 year olds to play. Um, well, it's the same thing. Until you are matched with the creator, your game's not done. You must be equivalent. You must develop a union with the divine. You can only get to the Father but through the Christ. Okay? Recognition and liberation are simultaneous because all this stuff is the same thing. It's all saying the same thing. You will match God. Right? Not all the physical stuff. We can't match each other physically, but we can spiritually. So, here's a way to think of it. Bad drawing, but I think you'll get the idea. Hermes, one of the oldest prophets, thousands of years ago, says all is mental, all is mind. So here's where the head comes in. Y'all have mind? Does it sometimes look like this? Or feel like this? Scattered all over the place, vibrations everywhere, can't hold on to one thought for a while, jump from one to the next to the next, fear over here, shame over here, guilt over here. Then you have some moments of peace, then some moments of joy.